Hello and good evening everyone. It's a wonderful evening and what a wonderful topic to start with. The webinar for today, Rebooting Management Tech Teachings and Learnings in the Post-COVID-19 Period. And what a galaxy of stars we have got for the session. Uh, first of all, uh, let me introduce to you the speakers and then I would speak and I would uh, discuss what is the background and the genesis of the webinar. I will take you around through each of the speaker's thoughts on the exciting topic. And um, it's a pleasure to welcome uh, Mr. Deepankar Chakravarti, the Executive Director of PricewaterhouseCoopers India. Uh, Dr. Subhansu Sanyal is a CEO member of the Academic Council I am Kolkata Innovation Park. Uh, Professor Ashok Banerjee, uh, the immediate past president of the Calcutta Management Association. Dr. Dhruba Jyoti Chattopadhyay, uh, he is joining in a bit, in a bit, Vice Chancellor of the Sister Nivedita University. Uh, Rahul Das Gupta, uh, Director and Trustee of the Globesin Business School. And I am your moderator for the evening. I am TVS Shenoy, of the, the Vice President of the Calcutta Management Association. First of all, thank you for being here, being with us today on this very, very exciting uh, webinar, very relevant for the days. Uh, what we are going through, a period which I don't think any of us would have ever imagined would have come in our lifetime, and I hope it doesn't come again. Uh, a bit about Calcutta Management Association. Uh, Calcutta Management Association is the oldest management association in the country. Uh, we are over close to 60 years old, uh, founded by uh, none other than uh, Jahangir Gandhi, a very famous Tata alumni and based in Kolkata is uh, uh, also Globesin Business School. Globesin Business School, a leading business school, uh, commenced 1995, um, all in the area of management education. And it's a great platform for CMA and Globesin to deliver this particular webinar on rebooting management techniques. Uh, if you are to reflect back on the periods today, uh, look back at what the challenges are. Uh, I'm faced with one big dichotomy. What is the level of physical education, physical contacts that is possible in days to come? How much of it is possible through the digital means or how much of it is possible through the physical means? Well, there's a new normal which has set in. I reflect back, it's more than a month that I've been I've stepped into my office in Tata Steel. Work seems to go on. And at times I wonder, well, did we ever need to have an office at all? How are we connecting with uh, Skype, with Zoom, and still being staying in touch and business carrying on? Well, there are pros and cons. We have got a fantastic uh, experience of academia uh, with us. We also got a fantastic blend of industry experience with us. And I would open up uh, the session and request, uh, request Deepankar Chakravarti with the experience, the wealth of experience in PwC to perhaps run through what does it feel in terms of rebooting management teachings and learnings? What does it feel from the industry experience? What does it view today? What does it view in the short term? And what does it view in the medium term and the long term? Uh, if I could request Deepankar for his views, please. Uh, good evening, uh, Mr. Shanoi. Uh, thank you for giving a very crisp and to the point uh, starting of the webinar. I mean, it's really a unprecedented crisis we are going through. And good evening, everybody who are here on the webinar, uh, hearing us. Uh, from the industry perspective, if you see, the whole economy has got a jolt. It's not that as any part of industry which is now getting a, you know any anything which is really of hope hopefulness which, which can i tell but that doesn't mean that we are really deterred by the incident and i always when i uh, i i discuss about this with multiple clients i always tell them look there is challenge currently we are facing but we should try to understand how it can be benefited because of this particular current challenge, how we can make a better future. 
and that's where it's really lying this rebooting term and when i when i'm saying this rebooting it's really not only the management uh, teaching let me just give you the other side of the story so what when i see a management teaching i see it as a supply chain for my industry because i have a demand i get people from you so it's a basically supply chain relationship and uh, in an industry when i'm seeing that people are really thriving for getting remote work and i'm telling you it is not easy i mean though uh, companies like us are quite well uh, averse of uh, how to do uh, remote working but if you see manufacturing organizations uh, uh, lots of uh, face to face boss organization they cannot do remote working so easily now if you really change that focus towards management Uh, learning currently if you see this particular challenge we will be facing two things into this one is what is the mode of learning you should do is it is it really a remote learning really gives an effect to the people who are uh, learning it second is what is the content we should learn because with the with the covid-19 scenario i do not think that you know age old standard uh, pr- procedural management study will go long way so we need to think that third thing i am telling you which which is a very interesting uh, topic in all this is the business model of management schools are we really uh, be surviving only with the maskel management student teaching or should we look beyond that and have to do lots of reskilling of management part personnel who are working currently because of this scenario of covid-19 i am telling you there are lots of changes happening in the skill set and frankly when i am i am basically an emerging technology leader and uh, when people ask me that what really gives an impetus of digital transformation i say covid-19 believe me for last one and half year amount of client communication i did on digital transformation last two months i got at least five times more calls from clients to tell me that can you please come down and do my digital transformation you were telling that but now it is the time uh, so so this if you see these three things so what is happening at one end i am seeing that digital transformation is happening and lots of job profile is getting changed and more so what i'm seeing people are trying to get alternate uh, product lines innovative product lines because without that it is very tough to survive now if i go to just bring it to the management teaching so two things one should we really focus on the standard management practice or should we start putting in crisis management uh, disruptive innovation um, entrepreneurship and is this a how we really teach the people is it only online and i don't think that's a very good solution there are lots of uh, lots of material you need to pass on to the uh, students and how you really really become a more close to student that is the challenge and uh, what i'm finding out this is a parallelism in uh, industry also people are asking me how i understand productivity of my uh, people i tell do you really need it uh, the question is you know i used to have every day 9 o'clock stand up meeting 5 pm uh, closure meeting i just can't do that I and mean, what should i do so we are telling that this is a change management you have to do you try to understand that the productivity is really not a 9 to 5 thing and with the remote working more of working from home balancing home requirement and your work requirement is not easy I, i'm telling you everybody has to do lots of homework and bring that back into the uh, you know office work is tough so they are also the, what we are doing we are trying to be more uh, you know connected to the people more collaborative tool sets uh, can we really bring that in also in the management uh, teaching make people more collaborative and and tell them that look this is the way we are here you are there we are all talking together uh, it's not only a, a video but also we can uh, parallelly talk 
through a document, give lots of collaboration, new tools, and try to be more innovative in uh, trading. And uh, the middle path, so I was telling, uh, this is a trading tag. I told about the business model. Probably you need to change it. You need to look into different things. The third one is content. In the content, I will try to be more innovative, bring in contents from large uh, online available documents. We used to do that before, but now it is more required because without that, probably you cannot survive. Hence, hence, I think these three, if you can look at, will have a rebooted post-COVID-19 scenario, which is actually a silver lining in the green area. Over to you, Mr. Sarah. I think Deepankar, I think some fabulous thoughts. And if I reflect back on my personal experience with where I run in the corporate, very I echo most of your thoughts very well. And if I have to just connect the three of them and connect the dots and look back at what you meant in terms of rebooting management teaching, uh, if you look at the content of learning, if you look at the business model, I think extremely relevant. And what we see in this day and age, the only thing constant is change. And the faster we adopt it, I think is life has become a new normal. If I could take back the same and cut the dot, and I lead it on to Dr. Subrangshu Sanyal from IMC Innovation Center, I think Deepankar did make an important facet in uh, rebooting education. And he meant, he meant about collaboration. And collaboration in the days of pre-COVID and collaboration of the days of post-COVID would be significantly different. How does one still be in touch and still not be in touch, still be able to get the jobs together and still have a varied teams across? Uh, so if I could ask the same to Dr. Subhanachu Sanya, from an innovation perspective, from an academics perspective as well, how do you see it happening and what new paradigms do you see uh, it, it emerged from here? Subrangshu, I think uh, you're on mute if I... Uh, if oh, could, yes, uh, yes. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, good evening, everybody. Uh, and thank you for asking me this question. So, see, uh, I am very bad uh, at predicting things because whatever I try to predict, it doesn't, it doesn't happen, okay? So I'll not predict anything. Let me share what I see now, how I see myself today. And, my, and that might be an example that maybe many people... Uh, would see things uh, maybe in the same way. One personal experience, two days back, we had this thunderstorm, right? Uh, so there were uh, this uh, loud thunders and lightning and all uh, that happened towards the afternoon. And then uh, suddenly around five o'clock or so, so now this WhatsApp messages, every second you are checking, right? That's the only thing you have in, uh, with you. And uh, and people keep on posting so many things, mostly those, you know, depressing stuff. So one friend actually called me, said that, you know what, just go to the terrace, you will see something wonderful. So I walked up the terrace I, and he said that, look at this big, bright rainbow. I don't know when we saw this kind of rainbow last. Okay. And it was, it was really amazing. And, and that day the sun uh, set, it looked... Uh, really beautiful. Uh, I don't know when I last watched, or, or uh, it, it may be happening every time, but maybe I didn't watch it. Now, then I stayed back and it was a nice breeze and all. And then after for, uh, half an hour, 40 minutes, when things darkened, oh my God, look at the sky. It's full of stars. I mean, when we had so much, so many stars, uh, you know, th there was one bright object just staring in front of me on the western sky, and then there was multiple stars and my kids started drawing pictures i told them you know you can draw pictures with the stars and all and then i just uh, opened my um, mobile and i downloaded an app which says um, stargazing you know what's your sky tonight and then i started reading all the stars you know the bright object even today now if you walk up you will see that bright object staring in front of you that's venus and Venus is at the brightest, maybe on 27th. You can see the brightest Venus. On the left-hand side to our south, that's the Orion constellation. A little bit to our southeast, you have the Canis Major, and you have this bright blue star, Sirius A. On the northeast sky, you have this Utsa Major, which is our Shaptarshi Mondol. And I don't know. I mean, in childhood days, probably I've seen it. Then I thought that these are all gone. Actually, the stars are already there, bright in the sky. 
Only thing there was a layer of dust, smoke that was hiding the stars. And this thunderstorm, it cleared all those dust. And how maybe the lockdown and all, we all know. So that's a good impact. This is how I see life post COVID. Probably we have stopped seeing all those stars which already were there. And because of this challenge, maybe now we get to the, the, see those bright stars now. Okay, so this is how I see uh, a, a change in perspective. So when you talk about innovation, this is how I look at innovation. Innovation is nothing which is, you know, detached from the reality. Only thing is due to some, some incidents, some perceptions, we just get away from the rea reality and then you meet some uh, real, you know, hard blow to align your thought process to the ground realities. And then you need innovation to realign or reboot whatever you are saying. Now, if I look at the current scenario, let when I talk about innovation, let that is always connected to the challenges that we are facing today. If it's academia, we are talking about admissions, placements, teaching, both from the student side as well as the you know, faculty side. I think faculty are facing more challenges than students because the, the, the young generation is very much used to this online. But people like us are slowly getting used to online. So I think we need to train more faculty rather than students now. So the challenges are actually uh, coming from different directions. Now, everybody's talking digital, digital, OK? But let me tell you, if those vegetables are not picked up every day from the farms, and those guys are not carrying it in their vans and coming it to your doorstep. What? How will digital help? Technology will not go and you know pick up those cauliflowers and cabbages from the field. So you have supermarkets open. Go and place an order uh, at Spencer. When do you get it? Is it digital a problem? Problem is the last mile. So I think this experience proved us the importance of last mile as well. You are not getting drivers to drive trucks. And you have startups who are actually making money in this opportunity by just providing drivers. OK, so just to sum up, when I talk about innovation, I think uh, we were, uh, innovation is about mindset, OK? Mindset to solve problems, to see challenges. Now I think the challenges that we are seeing today it ties back to the basics, roti, kapra, makan, healthcare, education. That's the basic. And this experience proved us that, you know, when we're in the comfort zone, we forget the basics. When we're in trouble, that reminds us, these are the basics. And if you don't focus on the basics, nothing works. Okay. So even in our teaching or education, whenever, uh, you know, uh, we are, whatever we are talking, I think refocusing on certain basic things needs to be done and on the top of it whatever tools and technology use those are just uh, as enablers i would like to finish here uh, and later on maybe uh, if you ask me some specific questions i'll be happy to answer well well Shubhanshu is a is a very good analogy which you said and i missed that opportunity to see the rainbow and i believe it is a beautiful sight the whatsapp was full of it and the evening was really gorgeous. One interesting point which you did mention, and uh, the way which you alluded to is focus on the basics and uh, the last mile is important. Perhaps once we go through each of the other speakers, how do we ensure that we're able to strengthen the last mile? How do we ensure that we are able to uh, get to new ways of learning and teaching? I also heard you say that uh, there's a the significant challenge of the teachers. The teachers need to be retaught. They need to relearn. So how do we kind of get there? I'll pause for a second and maybe I'll take it once I'm done with the panel. Uh, it's my pleasure again to welcome Professor Dhrubajyoti Chattopadhyay from uh, Sister Devedita University, the Vice Chancellor. Welcome, welcome, sir. Uh, we were uh, just midway through it when you came in and we're looking at from the academics perspective. Uh, what does it mean in terms of rebooting management teaching? Uh, what is your experience so far? And going ahead, how do you see uh, the industry evolve, the practices evolve? And um, where do you see uh, in the short term, in the medium term, long term, 
uh, this would lead us to. Uh, Dr. Dhruva Jyoti, please. Uh, I think you're on mute, Dr. Dhruva Jyoti. Uh, you might need to unmute yourself. Uh, it's still, uh, we can't hear Hello. you. Now? Ah, yes. Hello. yes. Hello. Yeah, yeah, you can hear you. Yeah. Good, good evening to everybody. You know that uh, this lockdown situation is making us more uh, actually active than what we are. And I, I find that from one meeting to another meeting, jumping is something what we are facing right now. Now, the, the specific question, I am just uh, listening to the last uh, presentation. Now, for me, this new situation is actually setting up a new challenge for our management education also when you talk about the future managers right now don't you think that to get everything ready say for example corona may actually go down and in another six months or something like that but after that how do you know that again something else is going to come so we have to get ourselves ready with and so when we're talking about the future management now we have to uh, decisions which will be taken by the management, which is based on dashboards, which is created by the big data. Um, uh, and all this new era of this digital rev uh, revolution, it is significant focus on different types of technology, which are based on problem solving. Now, when we think in this way, I completely agree that the basic management theories are very important definitely but along with this we have to understand that the curricula must be right now uh, we have to rethink about this curricula for the future generation to prepare ourselves also because we are also not very much um, uh, acquainted with this new situation and there the data visualizations for the different types of uh, business intelligence, business analytics, the design thinking for problem solving, all these things are becoming very, very important. When I'm discussing with a few of my students who are not basically from management, but who are across the domain, I find that there are two different categories of things they are, um, they are responding to. One, one of the responses they are having that uh, this particular online education, which we are practicing right now, many of the students who are not regular are right now participating in the classes. Many of the students who never ask questions in the classes, they are asking questions in the classes. And the reason they are citing is that it is actually the comfort zone which is helping them. So the next generation, how they are looking at it, the new education, we have to rethink about it. And based on that, we have to think about our curricula. So immediate, that means the short term thing is this. We have to prepare ourselves to change our mindset from the traditional curricula to the traditional and or the modern curricula and add mixing of all these things together so that we can really get the proper future generation ready. So that is what I am looking at as a short term measure. Uh, wonderful, uh, uh, Dr. Dhruva Jyoti. One important conflict which I see in your thought and what uh, Subranshu just mentioned before you was he was focusing on the basics and the last mile connect. Yes. Uh, I yes. heard you say that there's more of you would perhaps need to change the way you deliver. And also yes. connecting with what Deepankar said, content of learning needs to change. And that is something which you are echoing as well. Not only what you need to uh, teach, but what are the contents which you need to teach? I think that those are interesting. Teaching. And, and also the way of delivering. That's right. Yes. So the, the mode of learning, the mode of teaching. I think that's also Deepankar did mention. The business model yes. would change. Uh, I think these are very interesting uh, thoughts. I would take it to Ashok Banerjee. Uh, hi, Ashok, sir. If uh, I'm getting some kind of a disturbance sound at the background, uh, if somebody could mute their uh, microphones, yeah, it's better. Uh, Prof. Ashok Banerjee comes with a yeah. wealth of experience. Yeah. 
of both industry and academia. Or, or Professor Banji, would you have some thoughts on this? Yeah. Yeah. Good evening and welcome to this seminar webinar. You know, I think I belong to old schools. I still call it a seminar. You know. Anyway, three points which come to me. You know, short term. Unless I'm ready today, how can I face the challenges tomorrow? This was all told by Shubhramshu and by Dipankar and by also by Professor Chattopadhyay. I very strongly believe that today's students will have to be ready for tomorrow's challenges. The challenges will give them opportunities. Unless they see the rainbow when there's a lot of thunderstorm, how can they see? There may be stars, you know, because you know so they have to be ready for tomorrow. Number one. Number two, they must also realize that India is a great land of opportunities. Here I quote. Our past president, APJ Abdul Kalam. APJ Abdul Kalam came to IIM Calcutta. I remember that date, 14th of November, the foundation day of IIM Calcutta, 2011. And he said there have been problems on both sides of the Atlantic that India remained unscathed because of huge domestic consumption. So I very strongly believe our students, our future managers have a big challenge. They must understand that they have got a big thing. They must pick up the best ideas from everybody. And there, I'll tell something from the good old CKP lab. And the CKP once said, you know, the IMA convention in 2007. And he said, India is a great land and we must look at a bottomless pyramid. That's the first time he used the term bottomless pyramid. And there, you know, that's the scope, that's the opportunity. So our students should be ready to go to the 6.44 lakh villages, 724 districts. And they must also try to understand India is not the seven or nine metro cities or mega cities, you know. India is in the city, India is in the villages. And today, you know, if the COVID problem is sorted out, it will be first, it will be the, all the village oriented economies will be first descent. That's exactly what is the thing. Unless the cauliflower is coming to my table, how can I travel the last mile? So obviously, rural economy will be flourishing. And I very strongly believe agriculture, which is the mainstay of our economy, 65% of the population still in agriculture, physiculture, and other avenues of work. They'll be the guys, you know. So I love to tell as a student of management three points as, as also a past president of CMA and also as a past chairman of IMC Alam Association. Do not look at the today's problems, look at the challenges and challenge to give opportunities. Number one, develop a solid customer connect. This was told by Dipankar sir, and this we must develop a customer connect. And then we must develop a solid communication. And let me make a forecast because I am also making a forecast. I know I'll be wrong. But you know, above the line activities will be stopped and it will be more BTL below the line. So sales promotion will be a big thing. So people will have to think in a very, very original way to think of tomorrow. So that their challenges are there. So there if you people who put the best foot forward will be the winner. And let me tell you one more thing as a student of management, one more point which I very strong. Cash is out, but cash is in. You need knowledge, you need the attitude, and you need the skills, and you need the humility. If you have the humility, if you feel that I am the shop jantan, I, I can tell you I worked in industry and all. So if the day I believe we behaved in a shop janta fashion, I can assure you my distributor will throw me out of the room. But the day I went to him to learn about his market, I started learning. That's the thing I'm talking about my soap selling days. So very honestly speaking, India is a great land of opportunities. Our students should not feel they are lost out. They should feel that there is a lot of challenge, a lot of opportunities, and they must understand the environment. And I again go back to this, uh, my previous speakers, as Dhruvji Sir was also telling, we must understand the environment. Or not only the mega environment, but also the immediate environment, the task environment, micro environment, and also internal environment. And I would love to give you a little this thing. I must know customer connect or consumer connect, whatever you call it, then communication, and then my company, company objectives, company, this thing. I'm not at all worried what all the Finch report, medal stick, medal, not medal stick, sorry. <laughs> I think too many movies, you know, so that's the thing. Wonderful, so wonderful. Think, wonderful, so wonderful. I think I very strong, India is a great land and things will happen for my students, our students. Thank you. Wonderful, uh, Prof. Banerjee. And, uh, just to make the webinar more interactive, uh, there are two thoughts. One is, if you all could post all the questions in the chat section, it will be useful. And um, I think we are getting a resounding uh, yes to what Dipankar uh, Chakravarti and Dr. Dhrubajyoti Chattopadhyay said. There's a need, uh, does the content of education need to change? Uh, there's a poll which is ongoing here. Uh, so far, uh, 
I don't know if you all can see the results, but we can. But I can see a significant uh, um, bias towards one area. Uh, it ends in after a couple of minutes. So please put in your answers. Everybody who's connected, uh, that does the content of education need to change? So imagine this. Uh, while an event like a COVID can disrupt your life, does it also need to disrupt the content of education? Very, very uh, food, uh, food for thought, which you would never have thought ever that the way your content of education needs to change. What Mr. Uh, uh, Professor Banerjee was mentioning, look for opportunities, uh, look for opportunities in the environment. Perhaps the scope of uh, opportunities are changing, which would mean the content of education would also need to keep in pace with uh, uh, with uh, the change environment here. Some excellent points coming up here. I move on to uh, Rahul Dasgupta. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, Dr. Dhrubajatu, you have a point to add. Uh, I just I want to say that uh, I, I I don't think that what Shubhranshu mentioned is of uh, is really uh, any conflict with me because I mentioned always that when we are going to design curriculum, basic management theories and basic understanding. Otherwise, all these things cannot happen. Whatever we are learning, it is from there actually. So. But what I said, that there should be intervention in a new way, and we have to understand how to unlearn a lot of things which we have learned so far. Wonderful. Uh, I, I think uh, I think the point well taken, uh, Dr. Dubo Jyoti. I'm sure Shubhranshu would have been feeling a bit uncomfortable with uh, taking on that point there, but I think it's well answered. Uh, I, I move on to Rahul, Rahul Dasgupta from Gropsin, who has seen a huge number of students in flux. And I must tell you a small little, uh, I've seen a little trend recently in my LinkedIn profile in the last uh, 10 days or so, I would have got nothing less than 100 requests from students, all asking for uh, summer internships, all asking for uh, a new connection. It was really, really surprising to me uh, when I realized that the student community are going through a significant pain. Uh, most of the MBA students who are connected and who have been either offered summer internship jobs, they have either uh, disappeared or uh, they are looking for opportunities here. So that again, it would mean for them to relook and uh, look out for opportunities in this uh, given period of time. How do they manage the stress? How do they prepare themselves for this change? Uh, I don't know how it is with Rahul. So maybe Rahul, a quick word from how do you feel from the economics perspective? Uh, uh, how is it uh, you are looking at doing uh, an equivalent of industry 4.0 in education 4.0 or equivalent or more? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chunai, and uh, it's it's wonderful to be with everybody here. Um, I think you know um, if, if I look at the topic of rebooting teaching and learning from an institutional perspective, uh, this debate has been one which has been going on for a long time. It just so happens that because of this COVID situation. Uh, I, I feel post-COVID, particularly the pace of adoption will be much faster Fast. than what perhaps we have debated in the past. But the fact that learning and teaching has to change um, is not a new thing. I mean, it's something that we all have been sort of grappling with. How do you teach a student better, particularly when you want to move from a teacher-centric model uh, to a student-centric model? Student -centric, where the student yeah. of learning, right? So if, if I look at it from that perspective, and let's step back pre-COVID, so 30 days back before the lockdown, you know, uh, if I if you ask me that question in terms of challenges, I would have said internally I would have three challenges as an institution I'm talking about, uh, and not just globes. And I'm just generalizing some bit of it, uh, which is one is technology. So how how uh, effectively can we blend in technology and in what proportion to make sure the learning is um, uh, you know at the level that it should be? You know, what kind of infrastructure of technology should institutions have, and do they have requisite infrastructure? A virtual infrastructure. Second is, uh, I think, which uh, some of my other colleagues have mentioned on curriculum and pedagogy, right? So when you look at a management education, the pedagogy is essentially broken down into knowledge, experience, and behavioral elements, you know, which is something which uh, I think Srikant Datar in his uh, book, Rethinking the MBA, called it knowing, doing, and being. Uh, now, when you have a blended model of, uh, of learning, how do you balance those three elements, you know? And, and that's what going to be a challenge in the context of what should be taught uh, physically in campus and what could, what could be done remotely using technology. 
The third, of course, uh, which some of my other uh, panelists uh, spoke about, is about skilling and reskilling and training our faculties and and you know to get faculties who are qualified. You know, particularly if you look at management education, you need uh, people who have done PhD, who have been teaching for a while. How do you get a combination of somebody understanding technology really well with that kind of qualification? And how do you look at training them? So I think if you look at it internally, I would look at these three broad uh, challenges that we've had before. And I think the same challenges are there in the shorter term as well. Uh, it just, I think our way of looking at it is it's become more aggressive than it what was before. Externally, the challenges are similarly on the student side. Uh, are the students going to be able to learn from home as effectively as they learn in a physical infrastructure? Do they have the kind of infrastructure in their homes? I mean, we're talking about uh, students coming from you know, semi-urban locations. Do they have that kind of bandwidth in their respective homes to learn content? Which, uh, which allow a student to learn holistically, not just by reading text, but also looking at videos, looking at simulation. Is that infrastructure available today in our country? That's, that's going to be a challenge that we need to sort of deal with. Uh, the corporates and also if you look at the regulators, I think, uh, are they going to be in sync with institutions looking at a blended model? You know, what are going to be the policies which will allow and perhaps the onus uh, lies partly on the institution side to convince the corporates as well as the regulators that yes, this can be a model that will work for the industry. This is a model that will work for the regulators as well. So I think these were the challenges before. These are the challenges now. It just what happened post, I think, 24th of March when the lockdown happened, you know, the 80-20 model, you know, which was 80% in campus, 20% technology completely flipped over and it became 90-10 to the extent that 90% has to be now done online. And I don't think the system was ready for it. So we all were grappling to, you know, retrain our faculties, trying and figuring out what technology is, uh, you know, available to be used to give a real life, real in-class experience, the combination of video, live, text, what, what is the right formula? And I think we are still sort of grappling with that uh, as a system. And I think, you know, uh, one of the things I recommend in this process that what we are we're looking to do, we have, we, we have set up uh, an academic academic think tank task force, you know, who is evaluating, you know, the combination of technology and learning and pedagogy. That is ideal because this is going to be the longer term sort of perspective that I think institutions have to look at a blended way of delivery. And if they have to look at a blended learning model, they need to really evaluate what kind of technology to be used, what kind of pedagogy to be used, you know, how you train your faculties. So those are the challenges which are both uh, short term as well as long term, which we are trying to sort of grapple with. Also to bring in corporates as a stakeholder to accept for them to accept, uh, you know, people who are skilled through this blended model to be recruited into the industry as well. And what kind of models, perhaps this is a time for academia and industry to actually work in partnership. Uh, a little more than what uh, it needed in the past. So that's where I think the institutions really have to work on. Excellent. I think uh, Rahul, you have hit, uh, I think the nail on the head in probably, proverbially. And uh, you know what, as you were speaking, I put out a poll which says who needs to learn more uh, between the students and the teachers, I think is going, uh, uh, Next, next, it's almost 50 50 but it says the teachers need to little learn uh, more than the students at 56 43. so oh, it, yeah. is, it is uh, yes because we have to earn learn first yeah so very interesting yeah. point uh, uh, it's saying 56 I learn, they relearn yep so uh, yeah yes. uh, yeah uh, Shubhrachu, you wanted to make a point yes yeah so uh, in fact um, uh, i think whatever i guessed when we mentioned that teachers need to learn more the audience uh, supports that uh, but next question is more important what you need to learn what the teachers need to learn that is more important is it technology okay i don't think that is the problem Absolutely. see i have seen the best teachers are those people who don't teach the best teachers are those people who facilitate Okay, and in management education, the importance of facilitating is something which is missing. Okay, so I think this is the change ideally I would like to see. Instead of giving you a solution, I will actually teach you how to find a solution and you are capable enough to find out that solution. This is what I feel is facilitating. And if the online transferring to the digital mode or online mode, makes that shift 
from teaching to facilitating i think indian management education the standard will go really high that's it thank you I, so Shukansu, I, I, I just just like to take that point forward and just look back and say what rahul said about uh, the point which you mentioned about facilitating now uh, one of the things which i did mention about which i did hear rahul say was that you already had created a backbone of infrastructure which is ready for when the rubber hits the road uh, ropes in as a school was already ready in terms of imparting education through the digital way but look back to india 120 crore people 130 crore people how many of them out in the villages uh, without any connectivity or uh, less of connectivity how do you impart or facilitate teaching there uh, we have heard plenty of thoughts look at the people in the in the cities perhaps we are blessed and i look back at my own mates the drivers who are not able to come here how do the school and how would their education happen there that's a point which i think uh, maybe i would throw up a question here well it looks like there are certain strata of society who can have access to um, uh, the digital frames, uh, the digital model. Uh, and the way which you articulated a point and I thought was very brilliant, it's not so much about technology, but about the way you facilitate. How do you reach out to uh, such a large mass of people who don't have access to this? Uh, I open it to anybody uh, in the audience. How do you, yes, uh, yes, Dipankar. Yes. Um, when I was hearing the discussion uh, by Professor and uh, Shubhrangshu, even Rahul also picked up that point. What I'm figuring out is that digital divide is really playing a major role in current days. It suddenly happened. You please try to understand. Um, I think we all understand that this is just sudden happening. Had it been a planned way, we could have probably managed it much better. But as I was telling, even corporates never did a uh, digital transformation last two years. They are doing it in last 15 days. So my point is there is digital divide, but we need to really innovatively start thinking how that divide can be merged. And my two cents into that, what I'm seeing, and I, as I'm also connected to uh, some uh, uh, foreign universities on their academic board, I'm seeing that it's continuously the development what is happening is not really real-time, online, just-in-time uh, education. Rather, it's more of batch process, creating content, making those content available, make that available over a lesser amount of bandwidth, and make it more tighter. Uh, I should say encrypted in such a manner, those technologies are coming up so that your videos, audios can also move through on that lower bandwidth and you can have a feeling of or a pseudo feeling of uh, online classes and more of those technologies like AR, VR will, will come into the picture and so that you feel that you are still in the classroom but you are not in a classroom. And I, I saw in the question in that chat room, somebody told that, uh, attention deficit and uh, digital training. I really uh, disagree to that. I mean, whether I'm in class or not, whether I'm in doing a digital training or not, it doesn't matter. I mean, if I'm in having attention deficit, I will have in both the places. And I don't really believe in classroom training. I mean, uh, I I'm sorry, we, we have all the uh, teachers, professors here, but I believe, see, if somebody is not coming to a class, and really getting what Shubhrang was telling that facilitated in a manner that you can solve a problem rather than score high in the exam. I will take that person as more credible than a person who goes to classroom every day and score 100% by just jotting down some answers. So my two cents on that, that the digital divide will slowly, I think it, is, it will be a little bit faster in, because of these changes in COVID-19 will be gone away by a more of you know, augmented reality and delivery of uh, courses over a period of time in a batch mode rather than real on time mode. I, I think, uh, Dipankar, I'll just take that point across to Rahul. And I'm um, hearing from the chat, Dr. Arindam Banerjee mentioned that uh, while in the classroom teaching, 
teachers are aware of what the students are doing in the class, which is actually missing in online teaching. I also see Manas Chakravarti say, how to facilitate student to student teaching in online programs. So obviously, there is some kind of a disconnect that uh, online courses obviously cannot totally do away with, uh, cannot, uh, cannot obviously replace uh, uh, physical contact teaching. So that comes to a point in which uh, I think uh, I did hear uh, um, Dr. Dhruva Jyoti speak, or I, I don't recall who speak, in terms of what, or it was Rahul who said that what should be taught in campus and off campus, or what are the subjects which one can go the digital way, and what are the ones which can go, uh, which just cannot go the digital way? It has to be a touch and feel kind of an stuff. So, uh, Rahul, would you have any thoughts that in the short term, or if you look at it going ahead, what are the elements of classes or courses which can go digital, and what are the ones which just cannot go? You have to have a hands on experience. Uh, so, I think, you know, uh, like I was mentioning, um, like I was mentioning earlier, um, any content that you teach uh, would have to go through three phases of learning, which is the knowledge part of it, the experiential part of it, and then the behavioral part of it, which is the teamwork part of it. Now, if you look at the pure knowledge part of things, that can be done online, I feel. Uh, but the moment you look at it from an experiential perspective or a teamwork perspective, te teamwork, I think 50-50 in terms of you can facilitate teamwork uh, virtually as well. Uh, through simulations and through teamworks. But I think if you look at the experiential part, I think that's where you would need to be physically uh, uh, in contact, uh, in premise, uh, at a corporate, uh, doing live projects or in campus doing live projects, because that's also a very important element of management education. So I guess what that percentage should be, should, should be, should it be 50, 50, 60, 40? I think we will get there eventually. I think that's where we are all learning. What is that right uh, uh, sort of blend? But yes, there will be certain things which you cannot replicate, uh, in which is done physically today. Uh, I don't think 100% online management education works. Um, uh, so I think, for example, let me give you an example. You know, one of the events we did, if you remember, uh, uh, Mr. Chinoy, the boardroom uh, that we uh, initiated from Globes in Business School. Now, if you look at that as an example, like we have a program where we look at our students uh, simulating a boardroom. They look at actually going through a listed company and try and solve a problem. Now, the physical meeting is only two days, but uh, the virtual learning uh, from what is available online and through meetups or through WebEx, those all can be done virtually. So I think, you know, we need to come across a pedagogy or a way of teaching, which is a blend. Uh, I don't think any one subject can be all 100% remotely taught. There has to be a component. Uh, marketing may require more physical presence than economics, but I think you will have to have a physical uh, and a virtual blending uh, in anything you do. Uh, it just yeah, echoes yeah, the yeah, and I did two points uh, with everybody's permission. I, yeah, I, I make, just complete I one point, Mr. Banerjee, with what Rahul said. I'm just uh, echoing the thoughts Rahul Devdeep uh, Mukherjee in the chat box mentions. Uh, along with development of infrastructure, is it not essential for carrying out studies regarding behavioral changes in students or digital or online? Uh, will not study regarding student behavior in the new environment help in designing effectively effective pedagogy modules? This is something which you kind of uh, touched upon here. I take this question one more to uh, Professor Banerjee. Uh, and uh, we are getting a huge horde of questions uh, pouring in here. And I thought one interesting question was, um, uh, I just wanted to take one interesting one, especially which is said about India. Uh, uh, yeah, it was from S. Datta, uh, who mentioned that uh, to address the last mile, we should <clears throat> follow the continuous cycle of learn, unlearn, and relearn. So uh, I, I pose this question to uh, Prof. Banerjee. When you mean by learn, unlearn, and relearn, and we look at uh, addressing the last mile, Perhaps. I'll answer the question in a very, very cheese form. It's a very good question. I think all of us in I 4.0 have to change our mindset, number one. So a student today will have to change his or her mindset. So I very strongly suggest that knowledge is power, but they must also understand knowledge is a three component, intellectual knowledge, emotional knowledge, and social knowledge. Because they must be having intellectual knowledge. Rahul was telling, yes, very honest. 
you need intellectual knowledge, but you also need a lot of social knowledge and also emotional knowledge. So students should have a little formula. Number one, they must be multi-skilled and multi-tasker because the industry expects him or her to be multi-skilling and multi-tasking. For example, now the time of peace. Okay, I consider this very time of peace in the world of Napoleon because you know when there is war, you know you, you, the, the, the army cannot practice. When they, in peace, they can practice. The students must practice their the skill sets. So that they should pick up online courses, which should give them that thing. And many of the institutes, I'm sure Globsin also has got online courses. I've been just going to the net to see. And so the Harvard Business School having online programs, and those are free, actually virtually free. So are they picking up? Are they picking up a language? So that's the thing. These are all the things they can pick up. But I've got a little formula that will answer Mr. Doctor's question. A, B, C, D, E, F. A for attitude. You need right attitude. Ham honge kamiyad. B is basics. Yes, I totally agree that unless my basics are okay, I cannot understand economics at all. Forget economics, forget uh, any, uh, any, maybe purchase management. So I have to understand my basics. I have to understand very good in communication. And communication, I mean, communication to me has got four subsets. Number one is the verbal communication. Number two is the written communication. Number three is audio visual. And number four is the body language. And then D is discipline. And if I have the right attitude and the right discipline, I can assure you, I get 100 out of 100 because you just put A is equal to 1 and B is equal to 2. You know, attitude is 100 and discipline is also 100. Then success will be mine. So, and E will be energy. I need tremendous amount of energy and tremendous amount of friendship. So, I very, I would love to end by this thing by telling that today's students must be ready. I'm quoting again from the House of Tartars. They must believe in trust and relationship. Because that's exactly what Mr. Ratan Tata told the other day. I must com complete with that, you know. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Banerjee. Uh, Prof. Banerjee, we are down to the last eight minutes uh, uh, of, of the webinar and uh, still questions are pouring in. Uh, I uh, direct the next question to Deepankar. Uh, Deepankar, the question from Rajat Roy says, after post-COVID, we'll get a very limited time period to change our thoughts and infrastructure. So how will we face the situation? And uh, I am also reflecting on as in the corporate world as we speak today, uh, there is no sales happening, there's no collections happening, we don't know what's happening to our customers and customers are unsure, our vendors are unsure, but still we are perennially busy being in touch with them, understanding uh, what we need to do. So from an industry perspective, uh, or how would you see that, that once we have this uh, lockdown out, and there's going to be obviously a, structure, a structural and gradual change of getting it back to normal. How will we face the challenge? Uh, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Nair. I, I have a few uh, pointers before going to the uh, actual answer to this question. You picked yeah. up a very, very important point uh, at uh, that though we are not having sales, though we are not having collection, we are connected to the vendor to understand things. And what I find at this time of crisis, if we can create a communication bridge between the value chain, and I'm talking about value chain from supply to the industry to the uh, my product supply. So it's a so full value chain. If I continuously build a trust and communication with them, I don't think we'll be in a odd position. But but. The question is something else, is that post-COVID-19 will have very less time how we can adjust. I don't think that's the crux of the problem because uh, we should, I'm, I'm sure the large corporates, even SMEs, I know MSMEs will have some trouble, are already started thinking that what is it, the strategic positions we should change to have a better effectiveness in a post-COVID scenario. Uh, say an engineering firm. I, I was discussing and I, I saw a question here also. I was discussing uh, with, with number of engineering firms. The problem there is obviously I do not have a remote working facility. But can I at this point of time start thinking how I can utilize my surplus engineering asset, real asset to something different uh, product chain which is required for COVID-19? Can I think through? Can I make my system more AR, VR, robotics enabled in this period 
remotely so that we can get more effective remote working so those are the things we should start thinking and i'm telling you uh, it's it's this time is the time when you should act very very fast change your strategic position and start looking things complete different frame uh, rahul i think you was trying to say. Okay. so sir i think uh, sir to your point i think uh, i totally agree with you in fact one of the things that i urge corporates as well as uh, academic institutions to do is you need to have a think tank different than your regular operating team uh, who is looking at disruptions and innovation in your market segment and who better would know your market segment than you yourself and you know exactly the limitations you're going to face so if you are able to create that today and have a serious think tank who's evaluating options and opportunities of how to disrupt the market or how to disrupt your product or your service line then i think once things open up you will at least have a few options to go to market with but if you're not able to do that now i think it'll be late so i mean i i strongly echo what you just said and i recommend having a team uh, created internally right away a very interesting as you speak rahul we are precisely in most of the industry fraternity are actually segmenting and further segmenting the customers needing to know them better more platforms and of of uh, communication reaching out to the last mile uh, and i must tell you one very interesting thing which has happened during this uh, lockdown the number of meetings i don't know if it is true with all of you but number of meetings which we are stepping into daily seems to have far been more then uh, what we started off uh, absolutely uh, absolutely <laughs> true yes absolutely true and, and uh, I, we have lost count of what a saturday is or what a sunday is uh, it's become a mind boggling sea change of 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 the way which we are working and many a times the pleasure of having a newspaper in the morning is gone you know you always look forward to a cup of tea and the paper in hand uh, i think even that the time is eaten away so obviously it means uh, that you really need to reboot not only uh, the way which we need to communicate but also our behavior and attitude maybe many a time we are still not used to the fact that we need to respect other guys privacy and we are taken it for granted that the other person is always on board and you know he is always accessible i think there is a lot of new norms which are coming in and i'm reading this question to what snehal doshi has just asked snehal says uh, maybe i i leave i can direct it to any of you uh, rebooting should be more of forward booting to the new normal so it is imperative that the new normal be redefined both for academia and industry and uh, maybe uh, subranchu uh, on the last mile secondly last mile delivery in digital world is a new challenge in terms of logistics and you may throw some light on it i i i leave it open to anybody who would like to answer this or or a thought on this yeah yes much yeah yeah uh see one point that uh, uh, i think i want to uh, open up for uh, i will not open up for discussion but just for everybody to think so whatever we are thinking or strategizing that cannot happen without thinking about 50% plus population which is still dependent and i think for the next 10 years or 15 years will be dependent on those agree and allied services that means those very basic stuff which you are talking about and which is now termed as essentials okay so uh, all those uh, and this is what i mean uh, when i say back to basics so whenever and i think more and more uh, the industry should realize that there was a term called corporate social responsibility to most of the industry it was more like charity and you know Uh, something which is a compulsion at two percent. I think that thought process should change now. Probably the industry should realize they exist because the community exists, and if the community does, doesn't exist, they don't exist. So I think this is a big change which you call rebooting or forward booting or whatever that everybody is realizing. Okay, and management education should also align the teaching or the curriculum. and put a big trust on this point which is consciousness that we are all connected to this community this is one point i wanted to raise uh, because this, we have a thought leader here in this forum shubhanshu i think uh, yeah rahul please go ahead huh? i think uh, i want to echo one point which shubhanshu made earlier on uh, you know technology 
has to be looked at as a tool and not as a solution. And I think you, you can utilize that tool in different ways, in different communities and in different infrastructures and different geographies. For example, you know, when you talk about last mile connectivity, uh, you know, nowadays, you know, earlier on, we used to look at social media as just socializing, right? Facebook was used for connecting with friends, you know, Instagram was used for uploading pictures, not, but today, Facebook and Instagram is used for learning and development and teaching and, and sort of uh, doing live sessions. So that itself changes the way learning happens. Now, uh, it could be uh, geographic uh, locations where people can uh, access in Insta live sessions or Facebook live sessions. Uh, there could be geographic locations where only a, a, a file could be downloaded and you don't have that kind of bandwidth. So I think depending on where we are uh, communicating or getting the content out, uh, depending on the geographic location, the technology should be used uh, appropriately. And I think if you look at it as a tool and if you look at the challenge in terms of infrastructure, you can solve that problem, uh, at least in the short term. Long term, of course, we need to look at the infrastructure to be revamped in our country. I just have a second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please, Tibankar. I have only one point to say. Probably let's take this challenge and make India 100% literate through whatever digital mode we are thinking, because it is impossible to build schools and teach everyone in India, then you need the whole Bay of Bengal as your school. So I am sure this is the mode we should now ex uh, accelerate and get the whole India uh, learned as a 100% you know, uh, uh, learned uh, country. So I think that that's the civil learning we should have through this challenge to get it, not only management uh, teaching I'm talking about. Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, Rahul, I'll just complete the point which you're making earlier just on the technology part and maybe which we have not touched upon or uh, reflect on the discussion. Uh, Ritiman Bharat mentions, how does technology enable learning the students where survival is a big question in different remote areas of India? I think uh, the, the city areas, the urban areas, the metro seem to have been well covered. Uh, they don't have light, sanitation, drinking water. Can someone give some solutions about this? Uh, we have been hearing a lot, uh, lot of uh, options coming about Dritiman, uh, Doordarshan being employed as a medium for, for education. Can that be done? Uh, there's some thought of cable TV is reaching out. How can that be done? Can the radio be used for education for some platform for reaching out? Can that be done? So I'm sure that uh, we don't have a good answer right now, but I'm sure going ahead, in the medium term or long term, there will be new avenues of, uh, of reaching out. There's nothing, obviously, nothing like um, the teaching pedagogy of one-to-one. -one. But I think what we need, we are sure that social distancing is going to be a norm and the way education is going to be taught is definitely going to be far, far different. Yeah, Rahul. Mr. I have a point to Riddhiman's questions. I think, you see, I will look at it from a different perspective and not from a technology perspective. I think the challenge bigger than technology is mindset. You know, today we are not used to uh, uh, looking at content remotely or online as effectively as we look at in-class content today. And I think if you look at the adults, particularly if you look at the science of adult learning and robotics that we all know of, the first principle is intention, right? So I think if we have the right, if the students have the right intention for learning, I think there are a lot of avenues available today, combination of television, combination of Facebook, combination of uh, online courses like Coursera, AICT has lots of online courses free of cost available, uh, HBX has courses like I mentioned. So I think if the student fraternity can look at learning online seriously with the same seriousness as they would do an in class, I think they already have a lot of options available. and. As and when we progress in the next coming months, I think more options will come alive. So I would recommend to the students to look at what is available. I, I, and I think there's enough available already to look at. Yeah, Rahul, thank you. Uh, we are almost coming to the end. We have exceeded our time. Uh, uh, even if I try to summarize the food, the thoughts that have been, yeah, yes. Uh, yeah, uh, just one line comment actually. Uh, I find yeah. there is some sort of reservation regarding the technology, but I think technology can really give the solution and really can come up because I, I think about my young days where telephone is something which is available in only one person's house in our locality. 
a mobile is with everybody and now the use of mobile the mobile revolution itself shows that how the communication has been completely changed similarly that the development of ai in all the different domains from health to medical to every, every field it will make a set, uh, different types of revolution and i'm sure that is also going to give a solution for the digital divide looking forward that the government of india will give a lot of importance to this how to reach to the extreme part of the country and gives the internet facility to all over and how the bandwidth will be better is definitely going to help us in changing our mode of education wonderful uh, doctors i i think uh, what we have got enough food for thought today um, uh, uh, rahul did mention about uh, the point uh, dr dhruva jyoti was mentioning about corporates also playing a bit of the part uh, not treating csr as a csr but treating csr more for skill india upgrade india uh, also uh, i think dipankar you did mention it's more about the intention rather than uh it's more of the intention and conviction of an individual to overcome the crisis which can take us through these tough times uh, thank you everyone for a wonderful session all together i just take away four key points uh for, for us from here uh covid or no covid the basics remain the same intention <laughs> intention is what is needed and the facilitation of what we need to do would be it would be the key differentiating factor the mode of learning is definitely going to change is it needed yes it is needed different business models going to be evolved content of learning is going to change again that the way content is taught the way uh, uh, the new paradigms of uh, skilling is needed what's going to be taught and how it's going to be taught that's going to change infrastructure and technology are going to be key drivers Uh, i'm reflecting on people who have been prepared for it when the rubber hits the road who will be the most well prepared are people who have got a good background of infrastructure who have got the technology tied up with them and people who have not done will be on the back foot so i think going ahead uh, people who are who are the most well off or who are going to embrace the change are the ones who have invested in technology and they'll be ahead of the curve both in corporates and and, and in in business world Uh, and and the b school world finally what needs to be taught is going to be customized what element of uh, what degree of customization between digital and physical is going to evolve over a period of time the next uh, few months is going to be a mad rush we don't know what the light is at the end of the tunnel whether it's a light at the end of the tunnel or it's that of a train which is coming on board to smash us time will tell us but thank you all for a wonderful one hour session spent with all of you i think questions are still pouring in uh, and uh, shauli thank you for having us here and uh, if anybody else has got any other points otherwise uh, i look back and i'm going to look at the saptarishi today subhramshu uh, look at the rainbow i hope when it comes and all of us can enjoy the clean lovely night skies and reflect on well uh, all we needed to do are a different different spectacle and you can see a great new scene in front of you thank you everyone and uh, thank you, thank you very much thank you very much namaskar namaskar